Hello, this is Dr. David Tam, President and CEO of BB Healthcare, and welcome to today's video town hall to talk more about COVID-19 and what is going on at this very moment. Today is August the 10th, 2021. It is now a little bit after 4.30, and I apologize on behalf of the organization for a little bit of a delay. We've had some technical issues, and so we are going through with this Blue Jeans broadcast with an understanding that we will then put the video on Facebook and post it for everybody to see. We thought about canceling, but we realized that we really need to make sure that we get out the information that we have for all of you, because COVID-19 is still here. After 18 months of all kinds of work and surges and vaccines and masking, we still find ourselves in an ambiguous and tenuous state where there are so many questions that still exist about things like the variants and what really we need to do. And so we really felt it was important to be here to share with you this information as your local independent community health system. Before I turn it over to Dr. Bill Chazanoff, who is our infectious disease expert, our COVID-19 medical director, and most recently also our vice president for population and community health, I want to just let you know that BB Healthcare continues to fight the front on so many different areas. We continue to take care of patients who are still coming into the hospital with all their medical problems, their strokes, their heart attacks, their injuries, all their issues. The BB Medical Group is actually seeing more and more patients in taking care of their primary care and their secondary care issues, getting their specialty care, walking into the walk-ins, and even getting telehealth appointments at all their different sites. And we continue to provide services across the spectrum in terms of everything from lab, pharmacy, imaging, and all the other services that really together make up BB Healthcare. COVID-19 is still here. And COVID-19 is once again rearing its head as the Delta variant is now coming online and starting to uh, impact different parts of the country. You're hearing it all in the news. You're hearing it from different uh, spectrums of the government. But we wanted to make sure that we gave you the best information that we have, the medical information, straight uh, from the science. And for that, we want to make sure and turn you now to Dr. Bill Chazanoff, who's been with you and been with us through the beginning of this. Uh, he is, as I said, infectious disease expert. Uh, he is the COVID-19 medical director, and he is now the vice president for population and community health. Dr. Chazanoff, please take it away. Thank you, Dr. Tam. I appreciate that. Um, my name is Bill Chasnoff, and as Dr. Tam stated, I am an infectious disease physician. I have been at BB for about four years now. I actually grew up in this area and have many, uh, many family and, and friends that that are uh, living close to me. So I believe most of you out there, I probably know a little bit as well. I also work with BB Healthcare's population team, and I also serve as the COVID-19 medical director here uh, since March of last year. I want to thank you all for your time this afternoon. Um, in my normal fashion, I'm going to go through I'm going to go through a lot of information that I hope makes sense as we talk about it. Um, and as Dr. Tam had mentioned, I really want to spend some time talking about the changes that have occurred most recently really within our community, uh, the state of Delaware, the nation, and the world as well around COVID-19. We feel that it is our responsibility to make sure that we give you the most up-to-date, accurate information to allow you to make the best decisions, not only for yourself, but also for your family, your friends, your neighbors, and our community. So tonight I want to talk to you um, about the following, really the following subjects, and that includes the current numbers in Delaware, along with, uh, along with the United States and the world around COVID-19. I want to talk to you for a little bit about the state of Delaware's vaccination rate. I want to spend some time about why everyone is hearing so much about the Delta variant. And I also want to take a few minutes to talk about the CDC, which is 
Center for Disease Control's updated guidelines on wearing masks in our community. And then I want to talk about at the end, um, for those of you who may be eligible for the vaccine, who have not received the vaccine, some additional information that I think you will find helpful. So the information I am about to provide is data information and goes back since the start of the pandemic. Um, as of this afternoon, John Hopkins reported that since the start of the pandemic worldwide, there have been 203 million cases of COVID-19 reported. Again, that's since the start of the pandemic. Out of those 203 million cases that we've known about, there have been 4.3 million deaths in the world because of COVID-19. In the U.S., we have had a total of 36 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, again, since the start of the pandemic. We have unfortunately lost about 620,000 United citizen, uh, excuse me, United States citizen lives to COVID-19 uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. In the state of Delaware, we have about 105,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19. We have unfortunately lost 1,836 Delaware uh, residents to COVID-19. So our family, our friends, and our neighbors. Again, this is since the start of the pandemic. This afternoon, like most afternoons, the state of Delaware updates their numbers. Um, and the most accurate numbers that I have uh, from their website state that there are 95 patients currently hospitalized due to COVID-19 throughout the state of Delaware. Out of those 95 patients, four of those are requiring critical care. Over the last several weeks, the state of Delaware, like many other places, have unfortunately seen an increase in the number of daily hospitalizations. We've seen an increase in the amount of tests that have started to become positive for COVID-19. We've seen an increase in new COVID-19 cases. With these increasing numbers in our community and our state, I think it is important for everyone to know what measures that we have done in BB Healthcare to keep our team, our patients, and our community as safe as possible. For months now, we've been talking about something called protective, per, excuse me, personal protective equipment, also known as PPE. For most of us, this means masks. For others, this means masks plus eye protection, respirators, isolation gowns, and other items that we use to keep ourselves safe. Team members at BB Healthcare have, have and continue to use this personal protective equipment to provide protection to themselves, to the rest of our team here at BB Healthcare, to our patients, and, and to their family, friends, and the communities that we all live in. We continue to look at what we are currently doing from a PPE perspective, reading the new science and making adjustments as we can to make sure that we keep everyone as safe as possible. With this, it's also important for those that come into our facilities that we want you to be protected. Even if you are, even if you are fortunate enough to not be in a hospital bed, but you might need to have lab work done or to have an x-ray completed, we want you to be as safe as possible. We continue our, um, our stringent cleaning policies to make sure that things are being wiped down on a more than regular fashion. But at the same time, we are asking, we are asking all our patients, our visitors, our community members, as they come into our facilities, to ensure that they continue to wear a mask. As we wear a mask to protect ourselves and you, we want you to protect yourself and protect us as well. We thank you because this is something that we can't do without your help. So thank you all for thank you all for doing what it what you need to do to keep us all safe and keep our community safe. I'm going to switch gears for a minute, and I want to talk about the Delta variant and the COVID-19 virus. If you remember back in time, I told you that the virus that actually causes COVID-19 is called SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that causes the disease or the infectious disease that we know as COVID-19. 
Most of us, but maybe not all of us, have heard that there are different variants or different strains of COVID-19. The most common strain that we are hearing about or the most common variant that we are hearing about right now is the Delta variant. This Delta variant is still a SARS-CoV-2 virus and it still causes COVID-19. This virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, has been present for at least the last 20 months. We knew that in China, um, we heard or we heard reports from China in December of 2019 about a respiratory illness. That respiratory viral illness was later known as SARS-CoV-2. What we know that is different about the Delta variant or the Delta strain that it has been shown to be more contagious, uh, I repeat that, more contagious than the prior strains of SARS-CoV-2 that we have seen. It has also been shown to make people sicker than the prior strains. So now we have, now we have a double whammy. We have a strain of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that can not only make people sicker because it can spread faster, but it can also make people more ill if they, if they unfortunately are infected with the virus. Having viruses with different strains or changing themselves over time is not new. For most of us that get the flu vaccine, we know that we are asked to get a new flu vaccine every year because the flu virus changes every year. There are multiple strains of the virus, and each strains of that flu virus change as time goes on. And that's one of the reasons that we're asked to get a flu vaccine every year. So again, having a different variant or strain of SARS-CoV-2, such as the Delta strain or variant, is not something that's unusual to what viruses do. Unfortunately, the Delta strain or the Delta variant uh, appears to make people sicker and can make more people sicker than what we even saw a year ago. A question that I get asked a lot is, you know, if I do, if I do have COVID-19, how do I know if I have the Delta variant or the Delta strain? Well, I can let you know that in the state of Delaware, they sequence, um, let me back up so it makes sense. In the state of Delaware, we actually run testing to see if it's the Delta strain or a different strain. The strain that we are seeing more than 85% of the time is the Delta strain or the Delta variant. So it's important to realize that even though you're hearing it on the news, it's not happening in another country. This is not happening in another state. The Delta variant or the Delta strain is the most common strain that we are seeing even in Delaware. What I can say is that overall, the treatment for COVID-19 has remained the same over the past few months. There are some minor changes to what we recommend from a treatment perspective that was different than a year ago. For some of you, you know that uh, if you unfortunately become infected with SARS-CoV-2, and you have certain risk factors, then we know that there's a type of medication known as monoclonal antibodies. We at BB continue to use monoclonal antibodies. With the Delta strain, along with some other strains of SARS-CoV-2, we know that some of those antibody medications that we had a year ago, almost a year ago, are not as effective as they are today, but we have newer antibody treatments that are effective. So overall, the treatment of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, has pretty much remained the same. What I do think is extremely important to note is that the most important thing that anyone can do or the best way to treat COVID-19 is not to get COVID-19. We were fortunate enough that back in December of 2020, so about nine months ago, almost to the day, we received notification that a pharmaceutical company known as Pfizer had received, had received an authorization from the FDA for its two-dose series COVID vaccine. Shortly after Pfizer received their authorization, another company known as Moderna also received FDA authorization for their two-dose series vaccine for COVID-19. 
Then several weeks after that, Johnson & Johnson was able to receive FDA authorization for their one dose vaccine, COVID-19. We are fortunate enough in the United States that we have three vaccines that are authorized by the FDA for COVID-19. With that being said, it's also important to realize that the vaccines are still the most effective way to prevent yourself from getting COVID-19, the, the infectious disease. We know right now, when I just looked at the numbers that were released, that the state of Delaware has noted that 73.6% of Delawareans age 18 years or older have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. Now, we also know that not all Delawareans are 18 years or older. So when you add every all the age groups into that, that means that 56.1% of the total population has received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. This information can be found through the state of Delaware coronavirus website. This is not, this is not uh, information that is only available to myself or Dr. Tam. This information is available to anyone who is able to access the, the internet. I will admit that there's a lot of conversation. There's a lot of talk around the COVID-19 vaccines. But I will also say clinically is that what we have seen over the past eight to nine months with these vaccines, that this is still the most effective way to decrease someone's chance of not only getting COVID-19, but if you are vaccinated and fully vaccinated and still contract COVID-19, these vaccines significantly decrease your chance of becoming ill, ill enough that land you in the hospital or even in an intensive care unit, potentially requiring a machine to help you breathe. I don't say that to scare anyone. I say that just because of what we see. And I think it's important for all of you to know that. The last topic I wanna to touch on is really the Center for Disease Control, as I had mentioned, also known as the CDC. They made some updates on their mask recommendation about a week ago. On July 27th, with the increased numbers of new COVID cases in the United States, the Centers for Disease Control recommended that, that uh, anyone, people greater than the age of two, who live in an area of substantial or high community spread for COVID-19 should wear a mask while they are indoors. It is important to note that this is for vaccinated and unvaccinated people. And I'm gonna repeat that again because I had to read it three times to ensure that I understood it. What, we, what the Centers for Disease Control is recommending is that anyone who is older than two years of age lives in a community where there is substantial or high community spread for COVID-19 should wear a mask while they are indoors and it does not matter if they are fully vaccinated or unvaccinated. As of August 8th, which is the most updated information for, this, for Delaware on the CDC website, all three counties in Delaware are currently listed as having high spread of COVID. Last week, if you would have looked, all three counties were noted as having substantial spread of COVID. Substantial is a level lower than high on the CDC tracking website. I am also going to be the first to admit to all of you that probably like most of you, I'm also tired of wearing masks all the time. It's been a long 18 months for every single one of us. But with the information that I'm giving you and seeing what's happening in our community, I'm asking you to please consider to do what's best for yourself, your friends, your family, your neighbors, your community. We've done this for 18, 18 plus months, and we've done a really, really good job. Not going to be forever. So please just consider what, what you should do 
for your friends, your family, yourself, and your community. As always, I want to thank all of you who are listening for your ongoing support of BB Healthcare. I want to take a, another moment to thank all of my colleagues at BB for their ongoing work to keep all of us safe during this time. They are all greatly appreciated. And with that, I want to thank you for your time this afternoon, and I want to turn this back over to BB Healthcare's president and CEO, Dr. David Tam. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chazanov. A um, it's a little disheartening to hear it, uh, but uh, we have to face the reality of what is going on, and that is COVID-19 is still here. Please remember a couple things. Number one, before the vaccine, we knocked it down. Remember, that, as, as Dr. Chaz and I've said, the vaccine didn't really come on till December. Before the vaccine, we actually had times when uh, COVID-19 was knocked down. We were at the bottom part of the curve. It was no surge going on. And how did we do it? We banded together. We made sure we did the three W's. We washed our hands. We watched our distance. And we wore our mask. You know, I've been here since March 17th, as many of you know. It's uh, been a very challenging year, uh, 16, 18 months now. Um, and I just started getting to the point where I uh, enjoyed the summer. Uh, I got to go to a shorebirds game. I got to uh, I got to go to, to finally to the starboard for the first time and kind of look around and see things. Um, uh, I uh, uh, you know went to the beach a lot. Uh, walked down uh, Rehoboth Boulevard uh, and um, and enjoyed going to the stores and uh, and just doing a lot of different things. My first time up in Wilmington and Philadelphia. Um, and it's sad to think about the fact that we just have to kind of get back into the groove. But please believe me, please believe me, we have the ability to get this under control in our community. We did it before without the vaccine. We can continue to do it again. And with the vaccine as one more, one more tool, one more weapon, in our armamentarian, we can get to the place where we can once again continue to live our lives safely and effectively. And in fact, sometimes I even forget that I have the mask on when I'm now talking to people or uh, meeting people and so on and so forth. The other thing I'm gonna ask you to do is continue to take care of yourselves. You know, after COVID-19 and the surges, we found ourselves facing a lot of people who had ignored their health care needs. Maybe they had not worried about their diabetes or their congestive heart failure or their COPD or other medical conditions. They Maybe they didn't take their uh, prescriptions and get them refilled. Now is the time to make sure that you are taking care of yourself because as Dr. Chazanov said, remember the people who are in the best possible health that they can be are the ones that can fight the COVID-19 infection effectively. So please, please, please take care of yourself. BB Healthcare has worked very hard to bring over 70 physicians, including primary care physicians, into Sussex County. There are doctors who now have openings if you need to see a primary care physician. Uh, physician. Our walk-in clinics are open four of them across the county, and you can make an appointment online and go in and be seen in a walk-in clinic. There are many opportunities, including, of course, our two ERs, one in the South Coastal Campus uh, on uh, Roxana Road uh, near Millville and Dagsboro, and then, of course, one here at the Lewis Campus, and we continue to build. And so this is an opportunity for all of you to think about the fact that the things, things we need to do to make ourselves um, as protected from COVID-19 are the three W's, wear your mask, watch your distance, wash your hands. Uh, the fourth one is, of course, now to get vaccinated, 
at every opportunity that you can. And of course, you can get those here at BB Healthcare through the walk-in clinics. And then the last thing, of course, now is just make sure and take care of yourself. Come to a clinic, come to a BB Healthcare facility, and make sure that your blood sugars are okay, that your blood pressures are okay, that you know that your medication refills are, are, are taken care of. And let's make sure that we take care of each other so that we can fight this pandemic and just get it out of the way. Um, the last thing I'll mention is that we continue to grow and build. So please remember that uh, we're not stopping. BB Healthcare is not stopping. Uh, we see this as just one other thing that we need to do to take care of this county. We continue to grow, we continue to build because we are your local independent community health system. I'm gonna finish off with an interesting quote. This is from Dr. Tracy, who said about a pandemic, about the pandemic, it is unnecessary to dwell on the nightmare of the five weeks which followed the start of the pandemic. You know how our doctors and nurses and students with no thought of self labored day and night in that death struggle and members of our team stood with them daily serving as nurses aides, dietitians, or clerks wherever the need was greatest. Now, that quote was not from 2020 or 2021. That quote came from Dr. Tracy, who was one of a small group of women physicians who served, she was actually the dean of the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania in 1919. She was talking about the first pandemic, the one that happened, the Spanish pandemic, you know, 1916, 1917, 1918, 1919. BB Healthcare was there. Right? We've been here for 105 years and we survived that. The community survived that, we got through that, and now we're gonna get through this pandemic. We have more things to do, including getting the vaccine, as well as all those treatments that Dr. Chazanoff talked about that are available here at your local nonprofit independent community health system. We recognize that you have a choice, whether it be to take the vaccine, whether you wear a mask, whether to do those things, or whether to choose BB Healthcare or someplace else. It is my hope that you choose to wear a mask, that you choose to wash your hands, that you choose to watch your distance, that you choose to get vaccinated, and that you choose to get your health care so that you can be healthy here at BB Healthcare. On a final note, thank you once again, as Dr. Chazanoff said, to the team. BB Healthcare has been tireless in their work to serve the community. They have worked so hard, many of them are fatigued, Many of them are tired. Many of them are disheartened by the fact that we have this new surge coming up. So please help us and uh, help us help you in making sure that our team uh, is, uh, is, um, is supported. If you see somebody wearing a BB badge out in the Acme or the Wawa, I hope that you say thanks to them. I ask you to do that. Nothing is more important to our team than to feel the support of all of you that we serve. So it's unabashed. I know everybody sees me and says, hey, Dr. Tan, but if you see a nurse or if you see a tech wearing scrubs or wearing one of these tags, I hope you take the time. I, I ask that you take the time to say thank you and to give them uh, uh, credit for all the work that they are doing. And once again, thank you so much for all your philanthropic support here at BB Healthcare. We continue to work with you because our job is to serve Sussex County. Everything that we do, every dollar we make, everything that we generate goes back to serving this community. That's my commitment. And so on that note, I think it's time for us to go. Once again, I apologize for some of the technical difficulties, but this will be now uh, posted on Facebook, uh, probably in the next uh, hour or so, once we get some of our gremlins taken care of. Thank you so much for trusting us. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you so much for being our partners in providing the very best health care and making Sussex County the most well community in the country. On behalf of everybody here at BB Healthcare, have a great night and stay safe.